I'm a member of the first third grade class at St. Francis School in Ellsworth that started in January of 1949. Prior to that time, I attended a one-room rural school called Out My Corner, just shortly from, short distance from my home. We had all eight grades in the rural school. It was different, we got to St. Francis, and we had four rooms and we had all eight grades there too, but not just in the same room. Uh, just a few things for comparison. In the rural school, we had one teacher, one room, we know no janitor. We had all eight grades in the same room. Poor heating, poor lighting, no running water. We carried our lunches. We had no interior bathrooms. We sat with our coats on all the morning long because it was so cold we couldn't even hardly function. In January 1949, the St. Francis Catholic School opened up for the first time. I believe they were going to start in the fall of 48, but they weren't quite finished with some of the details of the school. So they decided to open the doors and we walked in the doors the first day it was opened. That was quite an experience. To say the least, going from a one room rural school, an old school, to a brand new school that was heated. We had a hot lunch program. Mrs. Me and I think Mrs. DeMuth were the first cooks. We had first grade, second grade in the first room on the southwest corner, three and four in the southeast corner of the building. On the main floor, we had five and six in the northwest corner of the building. And we had seven and eight in the northeast corner on the main floor of the building. Uh, the school had <clears throat> a lower level where we had the bathrooms and we had the cafeteria area. And the lower level wasn't quite finished when we moved in. We had to have the carpenters around there working on the doorknobs and different things like that. <clears throat> Everywhere you looked, you saw everything new. New desks. The old desks at the old school were on runners. So if somebody sat in front of you and they pushed back, everything in, in your desk under the cover of the desk fell on your lap. <laughs> the new desks had lids you could lift up. They had ink wells in them. They were adjustable. They were very much, very much unique at that time. Uh, the schoolrooms were new. They had new floors, uh, new lockers, new books. The windows on the school at that time were large windows on the sides of the walls facing outward. And we had a lot of exterior light coming in, so we didn't have to use the extra lights on the ceiling every day, all day long. <clears throat> We had the basic subjects in school, uh, reading, math, and all those types of things that you normally have in a school, but we had music as well, which was an addition. We also had religion, which became an important part of our schooling. Uh, we were there, to, we were taught to know God, to love God, and to serve God. Father Matthew was a very young priest at the time. He was about 19, 30 years old, approximately. He, he was the first pastor of the new school. He first one to teach religion in the new school. He was very strict with religion. He wanted everything pretty precise. He would give you certain prayers to learn your catechism and he would ask you to come back the next week and know those prayers. If you did not know them, there was a consequence. Usually you wrote them a few times to get it back in your mind. <laughs> um, Father Matthew was there to make God famous as the saying goes today. And that he really did. He was a good priest, but he was a very, a very well-organized priest. The nuns were well-educated. They came from the St. Bede's Priory in Eau Claire. We had four teaching nuns. We had one cook at the old rectory that was north of the present building in the old rectory, which was a two-story house. We had one that taught music, and we had a piano teacher. Piano teacher was Sister Kathleen, and she had a college education, probably more than one level. She taught at the University of Red Falls after she left the convent, so she was an excellent teacher. Uh, she would have music of the day, such as popular sheet music songs that you could uh, listen to and then play and bring them into her, and she would teach you that along with the regular skill things you had to learn on the piano. So, And she was great for recitals. We'd have recitals in the school in the basement. And she would sometimes have two pianos. You're talking about dueling pianos at your gala. We'd have two pianos, four students, two on each piano, playing a song like the Camptown Races. Each one had a part, one, two, three, and four. So she did things like that. <clears throat> Father was uh, very much interested in religion and church, too. So when you went to church on Sundays, you had to sit in a certain section. He assigned you a section on the south side of the church near the big window. And it was quite close to the baptismal font in the front, and then right to the right of that was the pulpit. And Father was really within almost arm's reach of you when he was in the church pulpit. He would ask you questions uh, from the pulpit regarding religion. He would expect you to raise your hand. If you didn't, it didn't make any difference. He would call you if you didn't raise your hand. Too. <laughs> 
he wanted to make sure you knew what you were talking about. And he wanted the people to know that you were prepared for your religious classes. <laughs> St. Francis School uh, had a lot of things that they did that I thought that were quite interesting. The teachers were excellent teachers. They taught by example. They had many group activities that they used at the time when they were teaching there. A lot of pupil involvement. You were on your best behavior, I must admit that, though. And if you weren't, no one wanted to lock horns with Father Matthew because there were consequences if you did. So we were pretty well behaved, as I remember. <laughs> we had a number of field trips when we were in elementary school. We went to the Shrine Circus in St. Paul Auditorium many times. We also went to the what was called, then called Wool Chamberlain Airport. It's now MSP at Minneapolis St. Paul. We actually went there prior to the jet set time. There weren't jet airplanes there, there were propeller planes. And Northwest Airlines had uh, DC-4s, they had a nose wheel, and then they had the DC-3, they had no, had no nose wheel, but it had a tail wheel. And then they had the Boeing Stratocruisers, which they flew to the Orient, that was a double-decker prop plane. And they, they gave us a tour of one of those planes, and then we go inside and sit in the seats and do that type of thing too, so it was really neat. Uh, there was no public transportation when we started Catholic school. The buses weren't running for that purpose. Parents were responsible to get their children to and from the school each day. It was in session. <clears throat> Father Matthew's father was the first janitor at the school. I think he was an only child, if I'm correct in stating that, and uh, the parents were elderly parents, and they followed him wherever he went as a pastor. So when he came to Ellsworth, they came to Ellsworth and lived in the South Piety area in town, and he was the first janitor. He liked to smoke cigars, and he'd have them when he's <laughs> doing his janitorial work, not in the school, but he'd be coming to school with a cigar. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we had very limited playground equipment when we first started school. We had one merry-go-round and four teeter-totters, and they were on the grassy area on the north side of the old Catholic church, and the teeter-totters were homemade, and uh, that's all we had. We had some ball equipment, things like that, but Father Matthew was a great person for soccer, and he liked soccer, so he taught us soccer at the noon hour in the wintertime on the playground. He'd come out and play with us, so that was kind of neat. <clears throat> there have been a lot of students that have attended the Catholic school that have become high school valedictorians and salutatorians, and they can say they're proud that they were students at St. Francis School. I had one classmate that became a lawyer and he graduated from Harvard University in the law school. He got a job in the Pentagon with Robert McNamara's legal team when he was Secretary of Defense. <clears throat> 75 years ago, the doors of a great school opened for the first time and are still open today thanks to the Paris generosity and hard work of many people. Your support is appreciated. May God continue to bless and protect, to protect St. Francis School. May the school continue its mission of serving God's people now and in the future.